welcome back to another episode of Creating the Village. I'm your host, Millie, here to help nurture the village within you. And today we have back again a special guest. Can you please introduce yourself to the audience? Absolutely. My name is Terry Bathia. Yes. And for those who are just meeting you, can you give them a little background about you and who you are, what you do? Ooh, I do a lot. I wear several hats. Um, let's see. I have my own company, and I created that company because my son was murdered in 2020. So um, I got into the insurance business. I am a licensed agent here in four different states, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. I also, since uh, our, you know, ta- our interview the other time, um, I created another company in my in in my son's name. It's a media company. Um, what else? I mean, it's just a it's just a lot that I do. Um, I am now. I was cast in a upcoming movie. Uh, May Robinson Studio, and he also hired me as a child labor coordinator because I am certified for the state of Georgia to do that on set. And uh, it's just, just you know, walking, doing what I have been called to do. Oh, well, that's really cool. Yeah, my camera is kind of dark. Wow, that's really cool. Well, congratulations on starting that new company, being cast in a movie, you're you're on the way up, your new job position. That's amazing. Um, Today, audience, we're going to be talking about relationships. So some of the audience has sent in some questions, and we'll ask those, and we'll just see how the conversation goes today. Um... I think the first question I'll pose, though, is how do you define relationships, romantic or platonic? Just how do you kind of define that word? Uh, Relationship means dealings for me. Like I'm dealing with someone, uh, whether it be spiritual, physical, emotional, <clears throat> Excuse me, mm-hmm. because uh, all relationships require something in those categories. Mm. Okay, okay, I can see that dealing with someone like an exchange of something. Yeah, hmm. I don't think I've ever thought about. I think when I think of relationships, I think of some type of mutual understanding and because I don't want to say consistent contact or like consistent communication type of thing because there are people that you could have a friendship with but you don't see them for like six months and then but then you have that friendship when you see each other again so but I feel like there's like a mutual understanding of some sort though like in relationships in general Mm. When you say mutual, mm. <clears throat> what excuse me? What are you? What are you getting to? What What are you saying? Actually, I I feel like when I say mutual, I'm saying that me as an individual and then the other individual part of the relationship have come to an understanding that our relationship will be based on a certain foundation or certain interactions because I know. Some relationship friendships can stem from uh, a commonality of liking the same show. And we understand mutually that our friendship is us coming together to either watch that show, talk about the show, maybe go to a convention about that show. But we don't particularly have to do other things that a different relationship provides for us like maybe sitting on the phone and listening to something that happened throughout our day. That might not be that relationship for that particular aspect of my life, 
So I feel like there's a mutual understanding. And usually it's kind of communicated a little bit that I, we are just friends on this basis. But I do know sometimes that that can get iffy, that people are like, oh, I didn't know we would only talk about this TV show. I thought I could also invite you to a baseball game. But majority of the time, I, I think that can help with relationships or that's how relationships form when there's that mutual, okay, I'm expecting this, you're expecting this, and that's communicated in some form. I think, yeah, um, when you meet someone, and it could be a girl, it could be a boy, it could be a child, it could be like a, mm. a person. So when you meet someone, it's... Um, like you said, communication is the key. And then when you don't put too much pressure as to you, you, you need to do, 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 and this is this, mm. you know, um, it's it's more of a, uh, it's more of a free, free, you know, free fall. Like everything is, it is what it is. Like we may have met here, we may like this, we may like that. Not putting a whole lot of stipulations on a relationship. And I think that's mm -hmm. what some people may do, like, right off that. Mm -hmm. Can you give an example <laughs> to how they can do, like, right off that, I guess? You know, like, say, for instance, I'm, I'm going to use, like, if you like somebody, right? Mm-hmm. And um, your expectations of this person may not be quite where you want that person to be. But at some point, you think you can change that person into becoming. Mm -hmm. So those are like stipulations. The X, Y, and Z, but yeah, A, B, and C, I want A, I want to see A, B, and okay. C. Okay. You know? Yeah, okay, I got you, I got you. Okay, that's interesting. Let me dive into this audience bucket of questions. Okay, let's do it. Well, I guess I think this is good with what we were kind of just talking about. What do you think would be the key ingredients for a healthy and fulfilling relationship? And I'm not sure if they're talking about romantic, but I think we can do both. For me, either romantic, friendship, honesty is number one. Mm. <clears throat> That's one of the main ingredients. I mean, for me, it, that just, that that's my blanket. You know, everything under the blanket keeps me warm. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> if I got on a shirt, you know, I got on my little snuggie, my, my jumper, my one my onesie, that stuff keeps me warm. But the blanket is honesty for me. Mm, okay. I can see that. Honesty, definitely. I. I kind of have a question about that. Like when it comes to honesty, let's say you have a relationship with people and it's cool, but I'm just trying to choose it. my words carefully. No, 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 no words. Just say it. Yes. Okay. My, my whole life, I've had like an iffy relationship with the word friendship because for instance in schooling when I was in school majority of the time I would feel like people were associates or no not associates acquaintances because I would only talk to them at school but they would use the word friend I didn't agree with that but it got to a point where everyone just keeps using the word friend and it would sound rude for someone who is calling you a friend, you'd be like, oh, that's my acquaintance. And so then I've gotten to this point of, okay, words have meaning, but I'm just going to go with what I'm assuming is the status, like the normalization of this word, friendship. And so my question is going to be, though, after you have gotten to this point of, oh, they're considering me a friend, but now you're really realizing they're not quite a friend that I would want to continue a relationship with. 
how do you, in terms of honesty, even before getting to this point, but in terms of honesty, be like, I don't see you as a friend, or are you just not supposed to say anything and let bygones be bygones? Because I, I feel like that's kind of crazy, but at the same time, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, I guess. I well, <laughs> that's 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 a uh, that's challenging because at, on one end, on one spectrum, a person is just maybe using the word friend, and on the other spectrum, you're just using the word acquaintance. I mean, mm. for you, a friend have these type of qualities stipulations you remember what i said in the beginning we yes you see what i'm saying so that's what we do we we do that automatically like how you how you were raised or what you would want out of a friend and you know what you would associate yourself with Mm -hmm. so it's valid it's it's not that it's not valid. It's valid. That's how you feel because on your sheet, you know, on your sheet for a friend, you have a list of things as to checking off what they would, the qualities they would have to have. It's, it doesn't make it right or wrong. That's just the way you see it. And the other person sees you as a friend because maybe they, you know, they hang out with you. You know what I'm saying? Their qualities aren't, you know, the bar isn't maybe raised so high. (laughs) Uh, Yes. You know what I'm saying? Acquaintance, friends. It's all in the same bucket. It really is. It's in the same bucket. (laughs) Yeah. That's what I kind of picked up on. But still, okay, I understand. Yes. Because because if you did not want to associate yourself with that person, then you wouldn't associate yourself with that person. So whether you put a title on it or not, it's mm. just up to the person. It's up to the person. Still in that same bucket. We dealing with each other. Back to dealing. You know what I'm saying? Okay. The then how do you no longer associate with the person politely? Say that one more time. How do you no longer associate yourself with the person politely in a non-ghosting manner? I do think ghosting is kind of rude. Well, you you really don't have to um, explain yourself to anybody. If you're not getting along, if you don't want to associate, you just don't. Your adults are do adult things. You know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Like, you can slowly wean yourself away from that person. If you don't want to have any more communication with them, you can just simply say it. Listen, you know, we're going on two different paths at this particular time in my life. And I choose to not associate with you anyway. And no, no harm, you know, no harm, no foul. It's just that I'm going in a, another direction. A person mm-hmm. that understands and that is an adult can take it like, OK, you know, they probably already felt it anyway. They just ain't say nothing. They just want to. Keep holding on. Trust me, people know. <laughs> people know whether you go, whether you call it ghosting or no longer talk to them or whatever. And that's just how it is. Like people are gonna treat you how you tr- let them treat you. Mm. And what would be the reason why you don't want to associate yourself with someone is because they cross the boundary, they disrespected you, they, you know. Your likings aren't the same, you know, your, your qualities aren't the same. And it, you already felt that, both of you, you know what I'm saying? In some type of way. That's my yeah. opinion. That's just my opinion. That makes sense. That was good advice. Thank you. You're welcome. So, do you think honesty or not? Do you think, what are some other key? I guess, ingredients is the word they use Um, (laughs) that you think contribute to like healthy relationships. Uh, You said it, communication, Mm -hmm. honesty, communication, the two biggest 
ingredients like you like you would have um i would say 30 percent you know um, well when you're breaking it down so yeah. to, to to build a hundred so we're gonna have 30 30 and then you have your 10 10 10 with like fun and you know your 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 personality mm-hmm. and all that other stuff that comes along with with who you are um but the the main ingredients for me is honesty and communication okay i see that communication is always such a it's such a good thing to work on it's always a continuous thing that's being worked on i find uh, yes. I think when you keep communi- when you keep communicating and communication number one, along with honesty, there's no way you can like go offside, go offside the course or go outside the course. Mm. It's, there's no way because if you're communicating. You won't have a. You won't have to be like, what did, what did they mean by you know? You won't yeah. have to think about what somebody meant or how they meant to say it or what they did or what how they meant to do it. You'll communicate. Mm-hmm. Listen, I ain't get that. What did you mean by that? And if you don't hear them, huh? What you say? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just <laughs> communication is the key to that brand new home, that car. <laughs> yeah but that beautiful relationship it is the key it is the key I can see that I'm learning that a lot because just on a very basic level when I'll send maybe a meme or like a video to someone and for instance if I send a video of someone doing something interesting with like a vegetable my dad he's a raw vegan sometimes he's a vegan and so like I'll see someone cutting an avocado a certain way and I'll send it to him and then he'll be like oh what did you send this for and in my mind I think it's obvious that I'm sending you this so you can learn a a new technique to open an avocado but he's like why did you send this to me and so I'm realizing with sending anything (laughs) words are very important (laughs) So just think what you just said, okay? You yes. randomly send your friend an avocado of how it was sliced or cut or whatever, right? Yes. No words? No words. Just think if it was a banana that you sent to someone that was cut without any words. That is a raw. They're a vegetable person. They okay, eat fruits vegetable. and vegetables all the time. If you said, if you said somebody a cucumber, you see where I'm going with this? A cucumber, and it was cut and sliced in a way. <laughs> but in a cooking video, if it's associated with a cooking video, what? You know how many different things I could think about. If you sent me a cucumber in a cooking video that was cut and sliced <laughs> in a different, in a different light, I don't care. With no words, oh, I got my, I got a, I got an imagination out this world. You go see it. <laughs> okay. So you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, yeah. It's communication. So if you say, hey, this is a new way, you know, of how to cut a fruit, vegetable, whatever, check it out. No, you just send me a cucumber or a banana. You see where I'm coming with this? <laughs> yes, I see. So, yes, communication is the key. And it's nothing wrong with, you know, you sending those things. But on the flip side of that, act like you're that person. Like, yeah. Just have to add some context. Yes, that will help. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I've definitely been learning that <laughs> because I just send stuff to people, and then the response I get is not the response I was thinking they would give me because I'm like, wait, that's not what this was about at all. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, you know you can 
even give someone some content behind a picture and they still gather their own understanding about that. You know what I'm saying? They get their own yes. picture in their head. I mean, so you might have to send more more content like following up what you meant by it. So yeah. people have their own understanding. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I wish people would just be on the same page. What, Telepathy. Uh, huh? You said I what? said I wish people would be on the same page, like telepathy, you know. You do? Just... You wish that for real? No, you yes. <laughs> 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 Oh my goodness. <laughs> you funny. I've I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Another question from the audience is, how do you balance maintaining individuality while being deeply connected with someone else? How do you, how do you what? Read it one more time. Balance maintaining your individuality while being deeply connected with someone else. Well, that should never change. Like, just because you're connected with someone, you should never lose yourself. That that is, Mm -hmm. I mean... Don't ever, 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 <laughs> <laughs> ever, 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 <laughs> forever, ever, no, <laughs> no uh, without you giving your all, I mean, who you are, because mm. that's who they're getting, they're getting you, not them in you, they're getting you, so you don't lose mm. your individuality, ever, and same with the other person. They should not ever, because they you, you guys are supposed to join together and build something and elevate each other. Mm. At this point, if you lose yourself, how y'all elevating together? That that's gonna be one leg, one legged. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. And I think like a good practical way is making sure to like to set time aside for yourself. To do something like by yourself, even if the two you have um, an agreement or combat a compatibility over something, making sure to do that thing by yourself at some point, I think would be good to maintain that too. Yeah, absolutely. Always have me time. Always find time for yourself. I I, I just for me. For I'm just going to be um, selfish. Like, if I don't take care of me, mm-hmm. who will? So if I take care of me first, first, then I have something to give to someone. But if I lose me, what do I have to give? If I lose me, what am I giving? I don't have anything to give. So I have to be selfish when it comes to a relationship, when it comes to a job, when it comes to my children, when it comes to a person, I'm going to look after me first. Like I got to be all together for me first. And then I can be all together for someone else. That's just the way I look at it. Amen. Period. (laughs) (laughs) You got to show up. You just got to show up for yourself first. You can show up for yourself, then you can show up for someone else. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Another question from the audience is what are some red flags young adults should be aware of when starting a new relationship? Mm. I would say not just young adults, but anybody. Um, red flags is you being put on the back burner. Somebody not having enough time for you. Um, a lie. Um, mm. And you're talking about white lies too? I am. Ex- mm. especially, especially in the beginning. Because if you tolerate it now, you got to tolerate it for the rest of your relationship with that person. Okay? And white lies are really lies. I don't give a... You could put white in front of it. You could put black in You could put purple. Are we doing a purple lie today? Are we doing a green lie? You could put whatever color you want to put in front of it. It's still... 
is a lie. A lie is a lie. Is a lie. Until it's a lie. (laughs) So, um, you know, again, it's just like honest. If they're not being honest, um, honest with you, honest with themselves. First of all, you look at a person and when you're in a relationship, starting off a relationship, just do some observation as to how they treat themselves. Mm-hmm. If they're not treating themselves with a okay, you know, gratification. They're not, you know, they don't love themselves. They ain't doing this. They ain't doing that. How they going, whatever they doing with, to themselves, they're going to do it to you. Mm-hmm. They going to do it to you. So you're just supposed to observe. Just observe and you'll see a lot. People love to show you and to tell you who they are. Sometimes silently and sometimes boisterously. I don't know if that's a word or not, but if it ain't, I just made it. I feel like boisterous is a word. It boisterous. sounds familiar. I said oh, boisterously. boisterously. Uh-oh. <laughs> you made an adverb. I don't know why. Let's find out. <laughs> Makes sense? Yes, that does make sense. Hmm. Boisterously is a word. <laughs> it is. Boisterously. Boisterously. They keep trying to correct me. So I, I, I'm not sure boisterously is a word. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, can you say it? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Boisterously. No, they just keep correcting it to boisterously. So I just made up a word, honey. It sounds good, feels good, it is good. Period. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What that that actually that's something I haven't thought about. The observation part of how they treat themselves cuz I know a lot of people say, "Oh, look how they treat others." whether that be um, when going to stores or restaurants or how they treat their family, but definitely looking to see how they treat themselves. Because a lot of the times, I know a phrase I think in my head sometimes, I might even say it out loud, is if I'm not going to get up and go get myself a drink, why do you think I'm going to go get you one? (laughs) And so that makes makes a lot of sense. If I don't want to get out of my seat to go get the remote, I'm not going to go get the remote for you. It's not happening. Oh. Just a little thing. A little thing. Yeah, you just... <laughs> You're a little bit lazy, huh? <laughs> no. What? What is it? I have selective participation. Yes. Oh, and if so someone awesome. else, I like that select <laughs> selective participation. I'm gonna use that. Yeah, and majority of the time, if I if I don't have the energy to go do something, then I don't need it, and that's that's the end of that. So <laughs> <laughs> I like that because that kind of reminds me when somebody is talking and you like, huh? You act like you didn't hear them. And you say you have selective hearing, oh. but you're just ignoring them. I like how you put that. Okay. That's in that go that's gonna go in that bucket with that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> selective participation. I like it. I'm using Yes. It. Yeah, I can serve my energy for the things that need the most. <laughs> oh <laughs> what's up? Okay. About how somebody treat themselves really. Um, mm. If they're really selfish, they're going to be selfish to you. You know what I'm saying? If they're really opinionated and they're, you know, nag, 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 they're going to be doing that to you. Somehow, some way, it always get redirected from them to you, redirected from someone other than to you. So mm. just be on the lookout. Yeah. Makes sense? That makes sense. I I have a question. So I have a friend and there are certain qualities. Okay, they're a loud talker. 
And so for me, I think in my head, I would never date a loud talker because they're so loud all the time. But I've seen instances where someone will say, I don't like this quality and then end up with someone with that quality. What was going to be my question? I do not remember. Um, (laughs) Wait. The question, oh, observation. I don't know what my question is going to be. Huh. <laughs> N- not a thumbs down. That's wild. <laughs> That's wild. Not the iPhone was speaking for you. Not boo. Uh, That's crazy. <laughs> I feel just like this. iPhone doing that for real? Yes. You didn't just see that. Look. It's what reading the- your thoughts. You didn't even put... It's reading your thoughts. That's crazy. No. You you are you telling me you cannot see that? I see it, but why why is it there? <laughs> because you're judging me. It's judging you. <laughs> wow, that is crazy. I, I never- was just asking a question and I can't remember what it is. It's okay. It's like they don't like that. They want you to remember what you have to say. <laughs> Oh my goodness! You said you you did you asked the question. So the things, the qualities that you see in the person you don't agree with, and then you end up with that person. Where were you going with it? You don't know. Um, maybe just how do you navigate that? Or because let me, I guess I'll finish the scenario. Uh, <laughs> so if you you're with a person that just for instance is loud and you know you like a lot of quiet time then (laughs) then um but you end up with that person but now that's something that could be room for combativeness because they're just naturally loud they can't really control it as much but you on this other side you want to tell them to be quiet sometimes but then that's going to stifle them as an individual I guess. Maybe it's Superman. I think it might be. <laughs> because that's crazy. Um, but maybe maybe that's kind of the question. Because you can observe them before you get together with them, but you know, love does crazy things for some reason. And then you have to put up with that for the rest of your life because you can't change that. <laughs> right. So My opinion with that would be you're settling, you know, Mm. because in your mind, you already know that you do not like that. So why would you tolerate it? Why would you even want to put yourself through turmoil for the rest of the relationship with that person? If that's going to be a forever thing. Why would you put yourself in a situation? Well, you know what people say. They're like, you love people and you overlook their flaws. No, you don't. Oh, how can you over? You overlook a flaw? A flaw would be like they're eating and some, you know, they get a crumb and <laughs> you know, you gotta. But a, a <laughs> something that ain't gonna be changed. Like they're allowed mm. by nature, by being, by a human. Nate, human nature. I don't know. Yeah. That ain't. Go, that's not gonna change. That's. Mm-hmm. That is. First of all, it turns you off. Like you don't like it. Why would you? Why? See, that's the thing I said. You. They. The person have X, Y, and Z, but A, B, and C. I can change. You know that. That would. We could change that later. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll talk to the person. I'll let them know, but I got to hook him in first and then I'm going to tell him all the things I don't like about him or her. Mm. That's what we, that's what they, people do. Okay. I see. So ignore all the sparks. No, you're loud and I don't like that. (laughs) You already know you don't like it. You get in a relationship with someone, you don't like it. The reason you're getting in a relationship with that person and you don't like something is because you think you can change it 
or it will mm -hmm. change later. It's not. Okay. You walked into it that way. That's the way it's going to be. For real. Unless somebody is going through therapy, they're going through health sessions and lessons, and, you know, they're doing self-help on themselves, and they, you know, they, when you met them, they were starting to do that, and then, you know, they're cultivating into who they were supposed to be and who they're going to become. Yes. But if they're doing the same stuff, go ahead. I have a weird-ish question. Do you think <laughs> it's okay to spy on someone? And hear me out, because a lot of the times people say people bring their best self to a relationship. So when they hang out with you, you're going to bring the representative. So they may have even studied up on you just by going through your social media or something and seeing what you like and don't like. So, and when I say spy, not like spy, spy, but maybe drop by someplace unexpectedly that you know that they're at and observe them in their mm. natural habitat. Mm -mm. No, that's weird. Okay. Yeah, that's really weird. <laughs> Either you're going to, and that's the honesty um, that comes Oh, out. yeah, honesty. Yeah, you have to be honest mm. when you're in, and know. And just pray they're being honest but on you, but you, know, you 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 know it's like you you know who a person is when you meet them. You really know whether you want to accept it or not. Yeah, you know it may not be the first. It may not be the first acquaintance. It may not be the second date. It may not be the third date. But you're gonna get. Eventually, you're going to, before you really fall head over heels, you're going to start mm. liking a person, and then you really like them, and then you sweet on liking them, and then you want to cozy up like them, then it turns into all that other stuff liking them, and, and then I, you... I'm just thinking of the relationships where the guy is married with, like, whole other families. You'll know. You'll know that. Okay. It, it's okay. Time, there are signs whether you want to accept them or not, mm. there are signs. Because a man going to have to have some type of privacy or something is going on where you're going to be like, this ain't adding up. And then he he may call you or he may do, you know what I'm saying? And mm. he may do everything he can. Like somebody trying so freaking hard to make you believe something. Let's find out what it really is. Some on that other side. They try, oh, okay. you know, and you just sit back and you'll you actually feel it. You'll feel it first. You'll feel it first, and you'll see some of the some of the actions. And then if you don't put it together, because you don't want to, because you mm. like them too much, and it can't be, uh, uh you know. And now nah, he can't be. It, it just. Can't. But if you feeling something. And then you see something, match that shit up. Excuse me. Stop. Don't. First of all, let me let me tell you something. First of all, don't play with yourself. Do mm. not play with yourself. Okay. And once you know you you know who you are in your heart, mind, body, and soul, everything will unfold right in front of you. You ask God. Listen, God has no choice but to show you, tell you, prove mm. it to you. And he show you, you don't want to see it. He tell you, you don't want to hear it. He do everything. And then you be like, mm -mm -mm, that ain't God. Now, God ain't telling me that. But it already in your heart, mind, body. So you already know it is. But you still want to like that person. Because they got a loud voice. You're trying to change. No. <laughs> but at the end of the day, for real, on a serious note, um, I believe that you do know. Um, You don't have to. Uh, go sneaking up or spying on someone. I don't think, I don't think you have to do that. Like personally, just mm -hmm. spy on their butts. We do it all the time. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, do all that. Okay. <laughs> we do it in. We spies. We are natural born spies. They mm -hmm. turned us. The internet has turned us all into spies, investigators, police officers. Just. That is true. <laughs> we all that and we ain't getting paid. 
Yeah, no, I saw something the other day that someone made a post. It was this guy in an Iron Mask, an uh, Iron Man mask, and they said, "Okay, Twitter, do your thing. Find this guy." I don't know if they found him, but I know people have found things I'm sure. based off of Twitter and just oh, this location was here, and it's like that's wild. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Yeah. Well, but okay, no spying. No spying. What they do in the dark will come to light. Mm. You will know. You will feel it. You will have a inclination. Is that is that what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't. You will know. Ooh. Okay. Another question from the audience: What's your take on the role of shared interest? Versus individual hobbies in a relationship. What is my what? Your take on the role of shared interest versus individual hobbies in a relationship. I think it's, um, I don't know what they're trying to say, but um, shared interest, you would need that. Well, I can I can say this because I was kind of having this conversation with my mom the other day. I was ta I was telling her I don't have any hobbies, and mm. I was thinking my hobby could be practicing little things that I would be able to use in emergencies. So, for instance, learning how to write on a cake, like learning how to pipe frosting or something. If someone ever needed a last minute cake because this recently came up, then I could write happy birthday or something without having to try to find a bakery or something last minute. Um, knowing how to just practice little sewing things. You're looking, at me, you're looking at me like my mother looked at me. And then she said, Jada, that's not a hobby. <laughs> she said, I've, she told me I was taking it too seriously, like I was doing too much. And that a hobby should be something that leads to being able to be social with others um, and something you just do for like enjoyment and relaxation. And then she gave an example of bowling. And I didn't think bowling could be a hobby unless you had a glove, like you're professional <laughs> about it. And she's like, no, just wanting to go bowling and having fun at a bowling alley can be considered a hobby. And so I think this person is probably coming from like, how important is it to have those hobbies where you can meet with your person, your friend, or your significant other, I guess, and then making sure to have that me time you were talking about earlier. Maybe that's where they're coming from. Um, I would say it's, it's, it's important because when you meet a person, you do want some light qualities you know like mm. you guys can share together like have fun together um you like it i like it too let's go do it together and then always 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 have your own um hobbies that you like to do and you don't have to necessarily include anyone like walking reading a book skating um yeah. Like, you know, it's so many different hobbies that you can pick up on. Go ahead. I have a question now because I know in some in instances people meet because of hobbies. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, well, maybe not unfortunately, maybe fortunately because they break up and now the hobby is kind of tainted for them. Mm. because they were doing it with this person mm -hmm. and now it's like no yeah how maybe how do you go about finding new hobbies or taking that hobby back for yourself uh well and you know for that you would definitely have to do some if that's something you enjoy doing that's something you should continue to do. Of course, you're going to have memories because you did it with mm -hmm. someone, but that shouldn't stop you from doing something you enjoy doing. 
So it's not like you're taking it back. It never left. You just joined, mm-hmm. you know, you joined with somebody doing it. Okay, it didn't quite pan out the way it was supposed to or you thought. You still own that hobby. That hobby is still yours to enjoy. Yeah. You know, don't don't just, you know, oh, I used to do that with John. I can't I can't bake cupcakes anymore. <laughs> no, not not the cupcakes. <laughs> I can't cook I can't bake cupcakes. No, you just keep doing your, your favorite hobby and you know, you you man up or you put your big girl panties on and you keep doing what you like doing. You know? Keep doing what you like doing. Don't let mm. no one stop you from doing it and that's on period i <laughs> like that yeah that's okay. just for you. Ooh, this is a really interesting question what how can you tell the difference between a healthy dependency and being overly clingy in a relationship mm. how can you tell the difference mm-hmm Okay, so clingy would mean I, I need, I need. Okay, I just need. That's that's real clingy. Mm-hmm. Need to be around you. Need to hear you tell me this. Need, need, need. That's a need. That that is too clingy. Healthy is I want, but I don't need. Okay. Okay. It's, yeah. Want. Okay. Don't need. What are some, um, like, examples, maybe, for the want, don't need? Uh, just being, like, in a, in a relationship. You, 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 when you get in a relationship, you should not have to, like, need. Like, those are the clingy ones. I, I need to be in a relationship. For what? Because I need somebody to be around. I need to love on somebody. Or I need to, you know, that's, that's needy. So when you mm. get in a relationship, you would you would want to want to be in that relationship, not you need to be in a relationship. Yes, but when you're in a relationship, what? So because I think an example, well, not an example, but just maybe some scenarios that kind of popped in my head is if someone went to the bathroom and someone was following them, that would be clingy. I know that would be, like, clingy. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm just trying to... What is an example of a scenario of a want, don't need, versus a clingy, I need? I don't know. Um, A want, I would say a want, don't need, just... It's it's really when you say clingy, you you you're talking about emotions and 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 the feelings that part mm. that part. That's the okay. only, that's the only way. I mean, it could be probably other ways, but that in my head, I'm thinking like I need somebody to be around, or mm. wherever you go, I want to go. You know, don't leave me. Um, and if we if we break up. You know, I need you back. I, I just got to have you back. But you treat me like, you treat me like shit, but I just need you back. That's clean. Mm-hmm. Like, I need, I need you. You talk down to me, but I just need you. So a person that wants you or wants, wants a person or want to be in a relationship, it's like we meet in the middle. It's like, it's, it's, it's a middle thing. Like it's, I lift you, you lift me. Um, if you if you do your own thing, it's okay for you to do your own thing and you know, your me time. It's okay for that. I don't need you mm-hmm. to be around me or tell me everything, you know, all the you you going out with the fellas, go out with the fellas. I know you ain't trying to do something with another person or you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't need I don't need you know, needy is just like I got to know where you're going, who you're going with, why you gotta go tonight, why can't I go with y'all? It's all men. It's okay. I could be the only girl. That's me. <laughs> okay. Got you. Got you. You know, so um, needy is just like, just want to be all in it, um, all in something all the time with that one person. Uh, 
I want is just like, let's make it happen together. Oh, that sounds so nice. <laughs> I don't. I hope I'm answering the question. I mean, that's yeah, what, I think that's just yeah. what I, you know. It's just all we can do is it's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, the last audience question. What we got? Make it woo, 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 bells and whistles. Oh, bells. what? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Mm, mm. That's a good one. <laughs> I haven't picked it yet. Uh there's just so many. So, okay. Do yeah. you have a question to pose do, to answer? <laughs> do I have a question now? Yes. Okay. Let me see. Let me think. I kind of found one. I don't know. I don't think it's like that great. It's nice, I guess. Is what? I said it's nice, I guess. The the question is how can um people navigate the transition from being friends to being in a romantic relationship? How can you navigate? Mm hmm. You just do it. I don't think it's that simple. Um, but <laughs> hey, what do I know? I've never done it. I <laughs> just do it like Nike. Uh, uh, okay. But you say it's not that simple. Why do you say it's not that simple? If you like the person, first first of all, it's good to start off with a friend in the friend zone. You I completely still- agree with that. You see what you like, you see what you, you know, how that person likes to treat you or treat themselves is the observation moments, you know, first couple weeks, days, months, whatever. Um, and your friend, a friend, because you start off, you didn't start off trying to be, you don't even know this person. So you got to start off as friends. Precisely. So if it, if you guys like each other and it goes to the next level, just do it. Yeah. You know, so I, I think... You saying it ain't that easy. Tell me why. <laughs> no. What I was saying was... <laughs> I was just thinking of the scenarios in my head where the individuals have been friends since they were in kindergarten or something. And so they've built this really strong foundation of, this is my best friend. And they've dated different people and now all of a sudden it's oh we they could both mutually have romantic feelings for each other at the same time but it's that transition from how do you address that maybe because I do think if you meet someone at first like just in life I do think you should be friends first and then there's that possibility of you can romance or whatever like have a romantic umbrella not romance as in the other type of romancing Mm. um yes uh i feel like you're writing a book about this (laughs) because because it's not that complicated i think i just complicate life huh i said i think i just complicate life at this point um Uh, yeah I, I think you're complicating life because if you're friends, listen, even if you was friends at, in the third grade and, you know, y'all grew up together, you know, you know, this person, right? You mm-hmm. like this person as your friend. Why couldn't you like this same person as your lover? Why not? Yeah. Wouldn't you want to like your friend and let that friend turn into you know, ah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Um, I, I yeah the- no, it's too many. It's too many TV shows. That's that's what's up here. It's too yeah. many TV shows. Too many K dramas. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, do it. I mean, if both of you guys like each other, just do it. You know, all that all that other stuff out the window. 
hey, we know each other. I know what you like. You know what I like. Um, you know how I get down. I know how you get down. We, you know, your qualities I like. My qualities you like. Let's do it. Yeah. Wow, that was such a good answer. Just do it. Just do oh. it. <laughs> if only it was that simple. You got something. On, you got something on your brain. You need to let go. Huh? No. Okay. I, my I, brain just needs to let go. That's <laughs> that's really the answer. <laughs> my brain is holding on to too much. <laughs> Don't do it to yourself. You remember? You do not do it to yourself. Yeah. Okay. I'll get there. I'll get there. You're well, there. You're there. You're there. Uh, you're there. <laughs> thank you. I'll yes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this was such a great episode. There are so many insights, so many things to learn. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I thank you for having me, and I'll be back. I'll be yes. back. Yes, <laughs> we would love to have you back again. Can you please leave the audience with how they can reach you if you want them to? Any social media handles or any plugs you want to leave? Sure. Um, first of all, a quote. <sighs> I like to. Um, just say you only have one life, right? You got one life and many chances. You have many chances because when you wake up, if you didn't like what you did yesterday, you can change it. Even if you wake up in the morning, you go on your day and something happens like, and you want to start over, you can start over right then. Like, you can say, hey, I'm starting my day over right now. It could be 12 o'clock in the afternoon. You can start over. So at mm -hmm. all times, remember, you have control over how you live your life. We don't get any do-overs. This is it. Life is life. Life be life People be people But you can only... You can only do you. you. Can't do nobody else. You can only do you. So with that, always remember, take care of yourself first. And then you can take care of someone else. Okay? And you can get um, in touch with me, JJEV, approved, C-O-R-P, at iCloud.com. Or you can follow me, JJEV222. Um, and that's Instagram. So if anyone would like insurance, please email me. And um, if you need any, you know, media, if you need um, child labor coordinator, if you need me to, if you want me to be a guest on your podcast, you know, hey, I'm doing it. <laughs> so, I mean, whatever, whatever, whatever's out there, if you need Terry, I am there. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, the best. Yes. <laughs> it's blowing uh, up. Oh, that's so cute. She's making <laughs> hand hearts and making them like go in yep. circles. Oh, period. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, audience, for tuning in today. Be sure to continue leaving your questions. Um. You can leave them right now. You can leave them on YouTube anywhere on any of the past videos because I'm currently not on Instagram. That's not a thing right now. Um, I might be what if you listen to this in like the future future. But right now you find us on YouTube um, <laughs> and make sure to keep creating a village wherever you go. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye for now. Bye.